Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, bringing you another half hour of libertarian and sometimes non-libertarian conversation. Tonight we're going to cover the subject of taxation. Now, the usual libertarian line on taxation is that theft is theft, no matter who does it and what they call it. But some of us, um, some of us who call ourselves pragmatic libertarians, realize that um, we can't abolish taxation immediately, and it's even possible that some taxation may have to exist more or less permanently, necessary evil though it is. And some of us believe that taxes, while they should be kept as low and as flat as possible, therefore should come in the form of a sales tax rather than an income tax. And here with me to discuss that issue uh, is uh, Adam Yomtov, the New York State Volunteer Director for Americans for Fair Taxation and uh, also the National Retail Sales Tax Alliance, and Brian Jones, attorney and consulting actuary. And um, this is actually the second time you two fellows have uh, appeared on Hard Fire with me, and um, we actually uh, discussed this issue to um, considerable degree the last time, but uh, for our viewers who missed that first broadcast, Adam, tell me a little bit about your organization, uh, why you favor a national retail sales tax, and what are its virtues by comparison with other taxes? Okay. Well, thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. Um, it is an exciting topic, and it needs to have further discussion, so hence the reason why we're here for the second time. I, <clears throat> my organization, Americans for Fair Taxation, is pushing to make our federal tax system more fair and more simple, as fair as possible, as simple as possible. Based on those characteristics with the sole guiding principle to collect taxes. Specifically, uh, what we want to do is abolish income taxes at the personal and corporate levels. We want to abolish uh, estate taxes, gift taxes, capital gains taxes, payroll taxes, all to be replaced by a progressive revenue neutral sales tax. And the way we're marketing it, it's called the fair tax. Okay. okay. Thank you. And uh, Ryan, you um, don't entirely go along with the idea that a national retail sales tax is the way to go. So make, that, that, explain to us why that is. That, that, that's correct. I certainly concede that any tax can be made revenue neutral. It's just simply a matter of doing the arithmetic. But I do disagree with the notion that the proposed national sales tax could, could be made progressive. As, as, as we heard already, there's going to be a rebate at the bottom end, and that's a progressive element, certainly. But the progressivity, if that's the right word, gets lost as we, as we go up the income scale. It just simply is not a progressive tax standing on its own. And the main problem I have with this proposal is the notion of replacing everything in sight with this one tax which is going to do all of the jobs that are currently done by the other various taxes that we have. That just doesn't seem to me to be realistic. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have to differ with that and say that the current system is not doing its job. It's not doing its job. Well, no, it's not me, collecting the taxes okay, that let it me should. Ask you Let's then, talk about $200 billion that escapes taxation each and every year. Well, how, how 18, feasible, million, though, is this, um, 18 million taxpayers who slip underneath and don't get taxed. How likely, though, is, it, is this uh, to pass, this national retail sales tax? The feasibility of it is incredible. I just came back from Washington in D.C. where Americans for Fair Taxation, our executive director, Thomas Wright, uh, had the opportunity to testify in front of the tax reform panel, the one that was commissioned by President Bush to look at alternatives to our current system in terms of making it more fair and simple. And we spoke. There was about 50 volunteers down there in present on their own finances, coming down there on own time and energy, taking vacations like I did. Okay, but how likely is it going to pass? Very Has likely. It been introduced? Introduced House Resolution 25 and Senate S25. So we have, we're the only proposal that's in both the House and the Senate. Okay, and uh, has it gone in, into committee in either House? No, not as of yet, but that being, that being mentioned, uh, Congressman Bill Thomas, who is the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee on June 8th, yesterday, uh, held 
uh, its first round of hearings on true fundamental tax reform, which okay. is, you know, great because it's showing the importance of the topic okay. and the issue. Fine, Brian, as a fairly educated observer, uh, how likely would you say it is that uh, such a tax would pass Congress? I, th I think it's almost out of the question that the thing go through as a complete substitute for ever everything else in sight. That just doesn't strike me as realistic. And obviously we're going to bat this backwards and forwards. But I think before we do that, I'd like to... Uh, well, let me ma just mention one look. thing. We're the only uh, organization um, out, uh, with respect to all the proposals that have been proposed to the tax reform panel, we're the only one where you had grassroots support. You had people sitting in attendance, as I just mentioned, just like myself, where we're sitting there and uh, taking up, once again, volunteering our time and energies to be there. We have over 600,000 members, National Taxpayers Union, if you look at the literature that they're okay. sending out, 500,000 members strong. Americans, uh, American Farm Bureau Federation has made this a top priority. Uh, they've given it their... Their, uh, their lobbyists okay. are out there talking about this. That's necessary in order for them to achieve their Fine. goals. So for the time being, though, let's just put aside both the question of uh, feasibility and practicability, and let's uh, discuss this as a uh, value issue. Now, um, a lot of libertarians say that if we must have taxation at all, then we might as well make a national sales tax, which would seem to hit everybody equally hard and perhaps be um, a little bit less a matter of your your money not being your own. That's what a lot of libertarians would say. But you know something? Your idea of a national real t retail sales tax mm -hmm. does not sound very flat to me. It's not a flat tax, is it? Uh, no, in the sense that um, it is progressive, okay, in that the rebate, or what we're calling it a prebate, which is amount of money that is given to you each and every month, depending on how many, if you're married or whether how many people are actually in your family, family size, you will receive. So, for example, a married couple, family size of four, will receive an annual prebate of $5,745, which is $479 a month. Okay. So no, there's your element of progressivity. Well, Very I, good. I, now, Brian, I, you were saying that uh, you didn't really think that this was a progressive tax, or at any rate, not as progressive as you would like it to be. Um, but putting aside the question of whether you're right or you're right on that point, let me ask you, why should a tax be progressive at all? I don't get that. I don't think it should. Well, I, 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 I think it's just as simple as saying that the people who can afford to pay should pay. And the people who are in desperate circumstances cannot be expected to pay. And every serious reform proposal, even, even this one, which I would not regard as quite that serious, even Milton Friedman with his negative income tax, he's coming up with something that basically comes down to a flat demographic grant at the bottom end of the scale. And that, I think, is fine. And the great attraction of that is that you avoid the standard welfare trap, which is the trap that says if somebody is on welfare and he goes out and earns a dollar, we reduce his welfare grant. Uh, these days we take away his health insurance too, and we tax him at a very high rate. Now if you have a combination of a flat income tax, as Milton Friedman proposed, and he is certainly no lefty, even though uh, you, you consider me somewhat of a lefty, Milton Friedman certainly is not. He's proposing a coordination of a flat income tax or flat up to a very high level okay. with a demographic grant and that works. Okay. Now it my problem, so. just uh, one more point, my, my problem with the idea of a, a sales tax combined with what's essentially that flat demographic grant is that that does not work anything like so well. Uh, for example, who, who is going to get this monthly rebate? Everybody. Okay. There, now, so Everybody. That's, that's the what point I would like to bring up here is that the two of you both seem to be covertly, at any, or maybe even overtly, advocating a guaranteed annual income, yeah. guaranteed by the uh, government. 
I, uh, what makes you every, think? Everybody who is a social security card holding individual citizen of this great country will receive a rebate. So as I stated before, family size of four, married couple uh, will receive $5,745, well, $479 when is it the government's job to provide a guaranteed income to its citizens? Isn't it the citizen's duty to go out and earn his own bread? 100%. And what we're doing here is we are... Real, what we realize is that uh, you should not tax up until the poverty level. The poverty level is determined by the Health and Human Services, and you should not really tax on the basic necessities of life. You're taxing it initially, but you're giving a rebate in order to compensate for that tax. With respect to what you stated before with the seriousness of this proposal, I will completely disagree. John Bro, who is one of the uh, tax reform panel, uh, he's the co-chair, he says, of the tax reform panel, he, Bro state, it is uh, from our article here, Bro said the recommended options could include an overhaul similar to the sweeping legislation passed in 1986, or perhaps even a new tax system, likely featuring a consumption tax such as a sales tax, where all uh, is taxed at one rate. Me. So with respect to seriousness, it's extremely serious. We have captured the attention of the American public. We have captured the attention of the tax reform panel. Okay. Very good. And now, would this, this uh, progressive, I mean, this pr supposedly but, progressive retail but, sales but, tax, just, would it cover just, all uh, retail transactions? All retail transactions and all service transactions at the final stage, only once on new items. It's only tax once on used goods. If I purchase something that and then sell to say, it to I you, would pay, I would pay a tax if I bought a, a book, for example. I would also pay that tax if I paid, say, a doctor bill. Correct. Okay, thank Correct. you. Correct. But realize one thing I just want to just want to jump in here is that the cost of everything has decreased given what I've stated, okay, because there's no more corporate income tax, no more personal income tax, no more capital gains, estate, payroll taxes. Therefore, the expense of doing business has decreased. Therefore, that new price under what we are proposing has decreased. So just as an example, currently this cup costs a dollar, okay, what would would happen under our system, removing expense of doing business, it would decrease uh, roughly about to 75 cents, 80 cents. So even though you're leaving a new federal sales tax on, on this item, it's revenue neutral. You're going to more or less pay the same tax. Uh -huh. That's one of the uh, aspects of it, okay. characteristics thereof. Fine. Brian, what do you have to say to that? Well, what, what, what I have to say is that you can produce testimonials uh, from people who are in favor of any new proposal, just just go around, ask all the people who are on your side, and you'll get testimonials. If you go around looking for people who are proponents of the income tax, you'll find equally strong testimonials. Well, then so why I, don't you give that us really one? Hmm? Well, well the, that's the beauty the, of this. This the, rules, what we're doing is common sense, okay? And that's why the only people that were down there at these tax reform hearings were the common man, myself, okay? I had a farmer from Michigan come in all the way a dairy farmer come in, had a guy who uh, fixes air conditioners. Well, it makes well, sense. Now, it makes sense to the individual on the street. It's something that's understandable. Well, now you seem to be but invoking the, meekness as a virtue. The fact that uh, no, an ordinary he, he, fellow supports it does not mean I'm, that it's... I'm uh, stating that it's clear and it's simple. It, it reaches the goal of what President Bush is asking for to be as simple and as fair as possible. And what I'm giving you is an indication that if the common man like myself understands this, then it's reaching his goal of simplicity. Let's okay. define well, fair, though. No, with, no, respect, with respect to who supports it, we just had in a letter that we uh, generated, it was sent out to <clears throat> initially 50 economists, of which they've all signed, the Nobel laureates. We had uh, Laura, Lawrence Kot, Kotlikoff, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, from Boston University, who's been, who's been an advocate of this. We have huge support, and the list is only growing. You haven't heard the last nor the first, you know. Okay, well, I'm, but uh, I'm, you're I'm talking about, you were talking about fair. Let's define fair, and then we can uh, determine why you think it's fair and you think it's not. What's your idea of fair, Mr. Jones? And, well, uh, my, my idea of fair is, first of all, at the bottom end, and that's why I said in, initially that the idea of what is essentially a flat demographic grant, the rebate, strikes me as fine. But the that rebate that flat demographic grant can easily be integrated with the income tax. It cannot easily be integrated with the sales tax. It requires a whole new mechanism, essentially notification, sending out monthly checks, what do you all think of this kind of... What do you think the government but, currently does social security? Excuse me. Let, let, let Mr. Jones finish here. The, the mechanism is 
largely in place through the income tax to do this. Now, there, there are significant advantages to a, to a good size national sales tax, which we haven't even discussed, and I think we should put, put them on the table, otherwise we're going to disagree and bat backwards and forwards for the whole half hour. The major, uh, major advantage that I see of a national sales tax is the effect it has on an exporter. An exporter can, get a, uh, can avoid paying a retail sales tax, or if you operate something like a VAT, he can get a rebate, and that means that his product is significantly cheaper when it goes out into the inter international market, and that's an advantage that Europe and a number of other, other countries have and other, other countries have as compared to us. And we're simply shooting ourselves in the foot by not having a significant element of sales tax. But I don't think, as I've said before, and I don't want to just repeat myself, I don't think you can get the progressivity into it except at the bottom end of the scale. And progressivity at the top end, I, th I think, is extremely important. Okay. And the second advantage I'd like to put on the table is that if you have a national sales tax and you coordinate it with state sales taxes, you can avoid, first, first of all, you can have one single set of administra administrative expenses to collect them all, mm -hmm. which Correct. is hi highly desirable. And the second thing is you solve the quite significant problem of people who order goods for delivery from one state to their own state. And that is a mess at the moment. Now, if you had something like a national sales tax coordinated with the sta state sales tax, you could negotiate a deal such as if I order in Kansas for shipment to New York, the sales tax is half the Kansas rate going to Kansas, half the New York rate going to New York, or something like that. That's up for discussion. Okay, but that sounds but a that lot kind of thing. Yeah, that sounds would, a lot more complex, though, than what Adam um, I don't what think so. Was, uh, Absolutely not, one, one because thing I agree, Adam, I, you, Adam hasn't even mentioned the state sales taxes you're yet. You're correct. Well, let me just, a uh, couple of points. You're correct in the sense of uh, exporting. We are at a disadvantage, and a sales tax like this would effectively untax it. So when it goes out into the world, into the global market, you would have... I don't want, you'd be more competitive. So it makes everything that is produced here in the United States more competitive. With respect to the mechanisms in place to disperse these monthly rebates to everybody, it's, it's a, the mechanisms are already in place. That's the point. We already send out Social Security checks. You already send out Medicare. They already have all these, these mechanisms in place in order to do this. Um, and then what was the... But the, the we have to take a break in, for just a moment, fellas, okay. and then we'll get okay. back to this. But... Uh, before we um, rejoin the fray, I would just like to remind our viewers that um, if you would like to learn more about the uh, Libertarian Party, then um, I suggest you go to the website of the Manhattan chapter of the Libertarian Party. That is www.manhattanlp.org. And there you will find links to the state and the national Libertarian Party, as well as information on all of our candidates. And here in New York City, we have completed our nomination process, and um, we have nominated Audrey Silk as our candidate for mayor of New York City. Um, Jim Lashinsky will be running for uh, New York City controller. Um, Ron Moore is running for public advocate. And I, Joseph Dobrian, am running for Manhattan Borough president. And we've got a nice big slate of uh, city council candidates as well. So to find out about all of them, go to manhattanlp.org, and they will tell you all about it. And now, let's get back to this action here. We are talking about the virtues of a uh, retail sales tax, national retail sales tax, versus uh, income tax and other types of taxes, such as uh, capital gains taxes and uh, so forth. Uh, now, what I would like to know is... Um, First of all, why are we having this argument? Why do we have to have taxation in the first place? I say theft is theft. I don't care if it's the government doing it or if it's some mugger on the street doing it. They're taking your money. They're saying, basically, it's not your money, it's our money. We will let you have it on sufferance. Well, this is, this is a kind of very extreme individualism that just simply does not hold water. It reminds me of the statement of Mrs. Thatcher 
that there is no such thing as society, there is just individuals. Well, that's, but she's that's right. That's nonsense. Because, and the reason it's nonsense is that society, society, previous generations have handed to all of us on a plate a vast amount of stuff. You can start with cooking with fire. Oh, sure, good stuff You can work stuff. your way through but language you, and mathematics. But, Brian, and you wind, excuse me, Brian, and, Brian, and you wind, you up, at the, you wind that, up at the end with the internet. Right. Are you now saying that, that because means, of that my money doesn't belong to me, that my property no, I'm is saying that because, held on sufferance of the I'm, government? I'm, I'm saying that because of that, the mental picture that you're, you're projecting, that you are a, a sort of individual standing on your own with nothing to do with everybody else around, Oh, is, I never is, say is, anything is, of the is, sort. Is frankly, nonsense. Well, I that, say nothing of the sort, well, Brian. I'm I, saying that uh, in just a moment. I'm saying that uh, I certainly have a duty not to initiate force and fraud against other people, but the government also has the duty not to initiate force and fraud against me, and then, that includes taking my money. Then libertarians but, should completely jump on board with what it is that I'm proposing, because the founding fathers did not call for an income tax or a direct taxation. Okay, there had to be. There was an amendment to our constitution. Our great constitution was amended. I could use other words, but we're on TV. Okay, by the Sixteenth <laughs> Amendment, and they went directly against what the founding fathers and all of How their well wisdom. Know, yes. Okay, Alexander Hamilton in Federalist Paper Number Twenty One. Read it. I'm not going to parrot, but he basically said. There's no, the best thing to have is a sales tax. Now, why? Because you get first crack at your money. It's yours. That's what you're saying. It's your money. At the end of the week, after laboring, some people slaving, they look at their paycheck and it's cut in half. Then, when they take some of their money and they put it into savings, okay, it is then taxed. If they have any money left over, okay, make a cap, make an investment, and it happens to be a gain, and they take that gain as a realization on the gain, it's then taxed. At the end of this all, uh, Social Security is taxed. When and you then die... When, when you croak, they rob your body. They rob your body. So well, libertarians should definitely jump on board because what does this do? Empower the individual. The word that is tossed around quite often is responsibility. How the heck are we supposed to take responsibility for ourselves if we don't have the power by which to do it? What is that power? Money is power. Give me back my ch paycheck. I could then be more responsible for myself. So I, I, I would like to see more libertarians, you know, understand this okay. a little bit more. Ryan, he brings up an interesting point. I think Adam does, and that is that um, uh, this is maybe the lesser of two evils. In that it gives you a little bit more control. It gives, it enables you to get uh, sort of a vague idea that maybe this is your money after all. It gives you, under and my plan, 77% more control. Right. But um, in any case, uh, you have to some extent control over how much tax you pay, correct? Uh, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? You apparently well, think it's not a good thing. First, first of all, I, 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 want, I want to avoid letting Adam get away with the idea that anything that was in the original Constitution is wonderful. Anything that came up by amendment is necessarily suspect. I think if you apply that analysis to slavery, you get into a lot of trouble. We're talking about this particular, particular 16th Amendment. I mean, I could say that when we talk about feasibility, how about women's rights to be able to vote? There are some things that you do need to amend, okay? Yes. And, and amending with, with respect to taxation was not one of them because you rob an individual of his power and his ability to care for himself. If society makes a decision that it is going to provide a minimum standard of living, Obviously, I think, and I doubt that anybody but would don't disagree. Use wait, wait, as a wait. Let me. For let me. Sir. What, what, what about somebody who is dis disabled? Is society, or is it not, going to make his disability a little less painful? I, don't, don't confuse and, the terms so, society yes. and government. They are not the same word. No, but yes, society, it, society, when it votes and installs governments that do such things as putting in the estate tax, which I'd like to come back to. Society is making that decision. Society is voting in a substantial majority to lay down basic ground rules within which we, we all operate. And I'm all in favor of freedom, and I'm all in favor of getting rid of bureaucracy, limiting bureaucracy, making things self-executing insofar as we possibly can. And a, a classic example of that is Social Security which is a very efficient mechanism of achieving, in my opinion, a very desirable well, end. Here, it's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, where, where are we going you know, with this? I'm talking about collecting taxes. Exactly so. I, I agree with respect. If you want to help out those who are less fortunate, by all means, 
there's where we could disagree a little you want to help out some people who are less fortunate but don't do it in the in the tax system don't use a bulldozer to clean windows okay what you're going to do is use it in an in, in, in accountable specific targeted spending program you want to help somebody but what what, then what give them the money through a spending program don't do it through some tax break in the tax code that just makes it more complicated and knows but, the, but that's precisely what is happening with the with the demographic grant the rebate at the bottom end of the scale that you're arguing for and that Milton Friedman was arguing for in the negative income tax that is, well, that a, is a problem as I see with the, uh, with the national retail sales tax I tend to go along with Ayn Rand who when asked what she would do about uh, about the needy and the suffering, she said, well, if you want to help them, you'll not be stopped. <laughs> but, but, um, let me ask you about the, um, uh, the rebate at the bottom. Is there a uh, commensurate increase at the top? For example, if I'm a very rich guy who um, spends a lot on, uh, on yachts and cars and hookers and so on, um, would I pay a higher tax than somebody who uh, maybe has to uh, budget his, his, his hooker expense? You. <laughs> interesting example um, but that is an interesting example because you do capture that income of uh, you do capture under the current system you do not capture the income of that hooker okay she's not putting on her tax return you know uh, street walker okay uh, what she's going to say is not do anything under sales tax when she goes in and she purchases her high heel pumps or other gimmicks to uh, make her pretty and so forth she will be taxed so you capture that illegal in income that's that's not being captured well of currently. course in an ideal world what she does would be entirely legal and uh, uh, encouraged yeah, and uh, you wouldn't get into any trouble for patronizing <laughs> her uh, but uh, well, that's a story for, uh, no, that's the, a subject for another the, debate. There the, again it seems to me perfectly reasonable for society to make decisions and say we are going to impose that decision on everybody now. And that's what I disagree the, the, entirely. The, the, I, uh, unless you're the, the, initiating the less, force and fraud against others, the, the less government of that, has no business. And the less what? of that we have, the better. I agree. And the, well, then why have the less, any of it? The less discretion that we get bureaucrats exercising in doing that, the better. Well, that's but what I'm about but, is making it more simple, making it more fair, and g retaining and giving the individual back his power okay, over well, his own that, life, no, et cetera. Uh, we can agree or disagree on whether or not you do that, but uh, in any case, I imagine the debate will continue uh, on all three sides, not just two. So thank you both gentlemen. Thank you, Adam Yomtov. Thank, thank you, thank you Brian Jones. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to see you all another time on Hard Fire. Spends a lot on... Uh, on yachts and cars and hookers and so on, um, would I pay a higher tax than somebody who uh, maybe has to uh, budget his, his his hooker expense? You, <laughs> interesting example, um, but that is an interesting example because you do capture that income of uh, you do capture under the current system you do not capture the income of that hooker. Okay, she's not putting on her tax return, you know, uh, street walker. Okay, uh, what she's going to say is not do anything under sales tax when she goes in and she purchases her high heel pumps or other gimmicks to uh, make her pretty and so forth she will be taxed